Well, almost immediately after allegations of abuse broke in the New York Times, Harvey Weinstein retreated into that favorite cocoon of the embattled celebrity, a luxury rehab clinic where he said he would battle against the disease of sex addiction. Doesn't seem to be going all that well from a treatment perspective. New reports say that Weinstein has been arriving late for therapy, falling asleep in sessions, even talking on a smuggled cell phone. Apparently, this disease is even worse than we could have imagined. Nell Daly is a psychotherapist. She's our window into this world, and she joins us now. So, Nell, there is new, um, just arriving on my iPhone, a new report yes. um, that Harvey Weinstein is leaving the oh. Arizona treatment program on Saturday, tomorrow, after a one-week treatment. His psychiatrist, psychologist, rather, mm -hmm. says uh, that he, and I'm quoting now, Harvey has been dealing with his anger, his attitude toward others, boundary work, and the beginnings of work on empathy. He's invested in the program. Pardon me if I call BS on that. Am I too cynical? No, I would agree with you on that. I think one week is definitely not enough treatment time for someone who has been accused of what Harvey Weinstein's been accused of. So it sounds like this whole thing was a deeply cynical PR diversion. I mean, it could have been. Right. We don't know. We don't right. know what his intentions were for actually going to treatment. I don't think he had very many options in terms of his PR. A lot of people who are wealthy and powerful will do something like this in order to avoid both legal action and try to rebuild the reputation. So I'm not surprised he went. What bothers me, though, is that a licensed therapist would lend his name to a statement that non-credible, that after a week, a guy who's been apparently chatting on a cell phone and falling asleep in group meetings is on his way to a cure. As someone who practices psychotherapy, mm -hmm. you can confirm that's ridiculous, correct? I would say that, yes. You would say I that. would go out on a limb and say You'd that, go yes. on a limb and say that. <laughs> I so would. doesn't it discredit the whole enterprise, the, the institution of psychotherapy, these treatment centers, I mean, some of us are already suspicious about this business, but mm -hmm. this se makes it seem like a joke. Well, the problem is, is that people who are accused, as he has been, of committing sexual crimes, what do we do with them in our society? So one of the things that we have to worry about is that they're going to commit these crimes again. So the reason for treatment programs is to hope that we can affect some sort of change so that when they come out of the treatment program, they're not a threat to the community. So, I mean, there are, of course, as with everything, many different levels. Totally. And so there are yeah. people who are considered, you know, abusive, who are abusive, but it, the root is their boorishness and their self-involvement. Right. And, or, and being a drunk. Big, right. And there are a bit, there's a big difference between someone who has sexual addiction issues and someone who's actually a sexual offender. But if you're exposing yourself to strangers in restaurants, that does seem to cross a line into, like, compulsion. Well, compulsion and criminal activity. Well, of course. So I, I think that in this case in particular, what uh, many people in the psychological community, many feminists want to see happen is he actually get prosecuted. And then if he is found guilty, and I know that uh, the state of New York, Los Angeles, uh, the police in Los Angeles, the police in London have opened up an investigation on him and even accusing him, there's been accusations that he's actually raped, you know, some of these victims. Right. The hope is that he will get prosecuted and if he's found guilty, go to jail. And then the question is, do we use taxpayers' money to have him get treatment in the prison system? Does it ever work? It's case by case basis. But my impression of the recidivism not, rate yes, for sex offenders is extraordinarily very high. high. Very high, very high. But the problem is that we can't lock people like this up in jail for life if we can lock them up at all. So then what do you do? You have to give them some sort of. Well, don't treatment. you age out of it? I mean, he's 65 years old. Isn't there a point in a man's life when he's just too tired to actually? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, I understand your question. The thing is, is that we can't come up with a sex offender profile. That's the one thing that we're having a hard time doing in the psychological community because people who commit these crimes defy everything that we understand. They, uh, it doesn't matter what age, what socioeconomic class. We can't quite pin down why people do this. The only thing that we do know is that the people who do commit commit sex crimes, 95% of them are men. So the question for me becomes if one out of every six women in her lifetime is going to be a victim of sexual assault or rape, and 95% of the people who are, who are the criminal offenders are men, how many men are getting away with this kind of behavior that we're not talking about? And as a society, are we complicit by not having some sort of larger understanding or system in place to actually prosecute people who do this. Let's start with Hollywood and see where it goes from there. Really quickly, um, as, a, as a psychotherapist, yes. 
don't you want to see some action taken against the ersat shrink who's declaring Harvey Weinstein on the road to recovery? I mean, if I sell breakfast cereal and my rival breakfast cereal is like 30% rat hair, I want to take it off the market because it discredits breakfast cereal as a brand. Like, you know, it discredits all breakfast cereal. You don't feel that way as a shrink? I have to think... Yes, I, I, I would. I would definitely question the judgment of that psychiatrist who is saying that he's on the road to recovery. But the problem is, is that he wasn't. He was in a voluntary, in, a voluntary right. treatment center. He wasn't a mandated uh, criminal in a treatment facility. But so he's shouldn't. free to leave. He's free to leave when he wants to leave. Should, as a psychiatrist, would I have personally come out? I, again, I'm not involved in this. Yeah, case. yeah. Would I personally come out after a week and say that you know I think that he's on the road to recovery? I wouldn't put my reputation One thing that Harvey Weinstein like proves from top to bottom is you can hire people to defend you, whether it's Lisa Bloom using her feminist, fake feminist credentials or, or this shrink or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's very distressing. No, thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me on. Thanks.